I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Wake up, Commander. Shepard, do you hear me? Get out of that bed now. This facility is under attack. Shepard, your scars aren't healed, but I need you to get moving. This facility is under attack. Jacob will brief you. Miranda killed Wilson in cold blood. Jacob's just a gun for hire. You expect me to trust them? Wilson was one of my best agents, but he was a traitor. Miranda did exactly what I expected of her, and she saved your life in more ways than one. Jacob's a soldier, one of the best. He's never fully trusted me, but he's always been honest about it. You'll be just fine with them. For now. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Mass Effect 2 Insanity Difficulty, right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another video. Remember, we are doing new Mass Effect 2 videos every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, around 2 p.m. Eastern. And I sincerely appreciate you guys hanging out in those premieres uh, and, and getting to hang out with you and, and in the comments and all that. Uh, which, by the way, leaving likes and comments on this video, not just in the live chat, but comments, uh, really, really help put these videos into algorithms and all of that jazz, and it's super helpful, so thank you. Also, in the last episode, I asked uh, if you guys would be interested in having a face cam for the entire time. I've heard from some people that they want it, some people that they don't. Uh, so what I've decided to do is for today's episode, we are going to have the face cam the whole time, and we're going to see... Uh, how it feels so definitely let me know how you guys like seeing my my face uh, during during the playthrough so we are level six we just met the elusive man the the elusive leader of Cerberus the what we thought was a human terrorist organization uh, they still are you know only looking out for humanity but Hey, maybe, maybe that's what we need right now. Nobody else seems to be. So let's jump into it. So we already talked to Jacob, who is one of the Cerberus uh, soldiers. He's basically just a, just a grunt, uh, but he's going to, and you'll, you'll get that later. Uh, but he's, uh, he seems like a pretty good guy and he's, he's on our squad now. We also have Miranda Lawson, who's kind of the elusive man, second in command. Uh, and she seems like she doesn't really like us that much she just kind of thinks we're necessary uh but we are heading to the human colony of freedom's progress because apparently humans colonies in particular are being harvested just straight up and when you finish a mission in mass effect 2 you'll be granted this screen something that we did not have in mass effect 1 you can see how much experience you've gained uh, what level you're up to, the squad points uh, that you've gained. You can see your mission summary real quick. You can see your import bonuses and what you got while on this particular mission, which you can see right there what we have, uh, which is the max that we could get going into Mass Effect 2. We have the M100 heavy weapon that we picked up, and uh, we got some credits, 11,000 credits over in that. So we can just exit out of that and continue on to the next bit. We're going to Freedom's Progress, baby! First human colony. We should be there shortly, Shepard. The elusive man put us under your command. Do you have any orders? Yeah, let's uh, hear about some other colonies. What did you find at the other colonies? Nothing. No signs of attack, no corpses, not even a trace of unusual genetic material to give us a clue. They just disappear. We've got no target to go after. Are you sure you'll be comfortable following my orders? We didn't bring you back from the dead just to second guess you, Commander. If the elusive man says you're in charge, you're in charge works for me and what do you think what makes uh you think this investigation will turn up anything new at exactly. other colonies official investigators got there first sometimes looters or salvage teams as well we're hoping to be the first ones there this time maybe find clues before somebody else disturbs the scene so my question is is how do how do they know that quickly that it's being attacked like we're we're gonna be Our there right away to look for survivors that's unlikely commander no one was left at the other colonies. They were completely deserted. Be nice to find somebody. Anything's better than another ghost town. And there we go. A little intro that we can get. We 
we look good. We look real good. So there's something about this outpost in particular, if you guys have ever seen the movie uh, Pitch Black with Vin Diesel family, uh, we, you, it's, uh, it, to me, it looks like the outpost they go to towards the end of the movie where like when they're when they're trying to leave the whole place you'll also see that we have uh new weapons now we have a shotgun uh we have a machine pistol and smg we have our grenade launcher uh it also said that we had a uh a rifle which we don't have now we do have access to jacob's shotgun so he's going to be using that what's interesting is in there's a, a little bit of a bug maybe in the earlier when you first get jacob if you actually save and reload right away he'll actually get his shotgun and you can just use it uh we are going to make sure that miranda is also using the sm the uh the little the little smp that she's got over there the m4 smp those are actually incredibly good guns uh just something to keep in mind as we go through this game it's they're they're pretty good so let's go ahead and grab that also real quick i want to show you oops i hit my mic uh, thank you to Dylan in the comments. Uh, I want to show you a data log that I actually missed in the previous episode. Thank you, editor, for for doing that. Uh, anyways, Looks we like want to. Everyone go just got oh. up and left right in the middle of dinner. See what I mean? It, if you've ever seen Pitch Black, it's kind of what this whole section feels like, and I'm into it. I, I like. It. Anyways, we'll head down here. It looks like this is indeed a ghost town. Strange. No bodies. No structural damage. And no signs of battle. You know, I'm still in the habit from Mass Effect 1. I'm like, oh, do any of these crates have anything in there? Or do I need to go check? No, they do not. What a, what, a, it's so creepy. It's so cool. Nothing up here. Of course, you can't collect items anymore. So it's not like you need to uh, do any of that. Of course, as I say that though, we do find spare parts that we can salvage for a thousand credits. The credits are going to be useful. So we want as many of those as we can get. Right away, we're gonna be met with more mechs. We're gonna use, uh, we're actually going to switch weapons here. Oh, no, that's not what I want. We're gonna switch weapons to the heavy pistol just so that we can get these guys from range a little bit. And maybe back up. Apparently, uh, that's just not hitting it. Uh, excuse, excuse me? Hello? <laughs> Anyways, we have this mech as well. Now, you'll see that these ones are, they actually have armor now. Before the ones that we fought in the Lazarus Research Station, those guys actually did not have any. So we'll go ahead and see if we can pop these. There we go. Easy peasy. And then as soon as those two go down, we're going to have to deal with the ones on the right here, which are going to be some Fenris mechs. But we switched to our little SP that we have here. And you can just see that we can just burn that down incredibly quickly. And then we're going to have two more robots, two more Loki mechs over here. I think those are variants. I'm not entirely sure. And another one is going to pop up. So we have to be super careful here. This is a section of the game that can get super hard really, really quickly if you're not uh, kind of staying on top of everything. So we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to pop a Metagel here. Get Miranda up. Hopefully help out Jacob, who was looking a little bit low. And uh, hopefully come and finish these off as much as we can. We're going to go ahead and pull this one as well. And then a warp so that we can get a detonation there on that Loki mech. And that one will go down. Those combos, the pull, the warp, are incredibly, incredibly good. So we're going to go ahead and you'll see that this mech actually won't chase us back here at all. Uh, it's it's kind of like a... You're, you'll see throughout our playthrough that there's a lot of times where we're going to kind of mess with the, the way the AI pathing works. Especially in these early part of the games. Uh, early parts of the game. Because... <laughs> things things are things can things can absolutely wreck you very very quickly in insanity this early now it's also worth mentioning that i have not put any points into our dear miranda so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna charge this one and then we're going to go ahead and melee as much as we can 
Perfect. They should have recognized us as human. Someone reprogrammed them to attack on sight. We're not alone here. Yeah. Freedom's progress, and there's another world that we're going to get to before we're, like, you know, powered up and we have items and stuff. You'll see that <laughs> they can get they can get super, super tricky. Something that I haven't done yet that I should do is we need to put some points into Miranda's skill tree here. So you'll see that she has Overload, which is exact, pretty much exactly how it worked in Mass Effect 1. And then we have Warp, which is new, uh, it, a new version of Warp. It rips enemies apart at the molecular level and stops health regeneration. It's effective against armor and biotic barriers, which means Miranda actually can cover every single armor type, defense type, whatever you want to call it. She can handle all of those just on her own, making her an incredibly useful squad mate. And then she has Cerberus Officer. It hones Miranda's combat skills, weapon damage, and health. Entire squad receives a combat bonus. Uh, that is super useful as well. We're going to go ahead and give her some points into that. And then uh, I recommend just giving her some points into get these other ones as well. Her other ability that she doesn't have unlocked yet is Slam, uh, which is pretty good. It lifts the target and then slams them into the ground, inflicting massive damage. You can use that as a DPS ability, something that does a lot of damage, or uh, you can use it, which is what I prefer, as like a crowd control. Um, but we can't put any points into anybody else. Probably should have put those points into Miranda before that encounter, but that's fine. Just the noise. It sounds like there's whales. You can see everyone left in a hurry. There is some stuff over here that we can grab, including a wall safe that we can bypass. Remember that we can do these pretty easily now. We just need to find the the matching, uh, whatever you want to call it, the little matching symbols, and we'll be able to do that. Easy peasy. Those do get harder, of course, as the game progresses. But for now, 2,000 credits. Man, that's ours. A med kit down here. We're going to need those because I used some. And then we have some salvage parts here. And as soon as we come outside, we're going to have to deal with more Loki mechs. And beyond that, another Fenris mech here. So I'm going to go ahead and charge that. And then I'm going to back up as much as I can. We'll go ahead and melee that. Those explosions that happen there, it looks like it's going to murder your face. Uh, but it's actually not. It doesn't really. It's not that bad. So then we're going to go ahead and use this again. And then our charge is already off cooldown. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to charge. And now you can see the power of the shotgun charge. That was the first time that we've switched to our shotgun and done that. And isn't it? It's just a beautiful thing. It feels so good. You can melee. You do a... You, you shotgun, melee... And it's like they're dead before they can even. Hello? Stop right there. Franta, you said you'd let me handle this. Wait. Shepard? I'm not taking any chances with Cerberus operatives. Put those weapons down. Shepard? Is that. You're alive? Shit's Tally! Remember when I gave you that Geth data tally? Did it help you complete your pilgrimage? Yes, it did. Franta, weapons down. This is definitely Commander Shepard. Why is your old commander working for Cerberus? I don't know. Maybe we should ask. Now, because this is an imported save where we did go get that Geth data, uh, we can immediately dissolve this situation and just say, hey, what about that Geth data that we gave you? Uh, if you didn't do that or you didn't import the save, then you would have, there would be a little more, she wouldn't be so sure right away. I nearly died, Tally. Cerberus spent two years rebuilding me. They want me to investigate attacks on human colonies. Likely story. No organization would commit so many resources to bring back one soldier. You haven't seen Shepard in action, Praza. Trust me, it was money well spent. Perhaps we can work together. We're here looking for a young Quarian named Vitor. He was here on pilgrimage. Isn't that a little strange? A Quarian visiting a remote human colony? Quarians can choose where they go on pilgrimage. Vitor liked the idea of helping a small settlement. He was always nervous in crowds. She means that he was unstable. Combine that with damage to his suit CO2 scrubbers and an infection from an open-air exposure, and he's likely delirious. When he saw us landing, he hid in a warehouse on the far side of town. We suspect he also programmed the mechs to attack anything that moved. Huh. We need to team up? Vitor is the only one who can tell us what happened here. We should work together to find him. Good idea. You'll need two teams to get past the drones anyway. Now we're working with Cerberus? No, Prazat. You're working for me. If you can't follow orders, go wait on the ship. 
Head for the warehouse through the center of the colony. We'll circle around the far side and draw off some of the drones to clear you a path. Your people really don't like Cerberus. What did I miss? They killed our people, infiltrated our flotilla, and tried to blow up one of our ships. That's not how I'd have explained it exactly. It was nothing personal. We can argue over who killed who later. Right now we've got a job to do. Agreed. We work together to get to Vitor. Make sure to keep in radio contact. Will do. Good luck, Shepard. Whatever I happens, it's good to have you back. I am so curious. I wish Miranda would actually explain like her side and like what what act what what does she think happens, right? Like that, I'm so curious about that. I love how this medical equipment turns on as you get closer, or at least the interface. Also, I love how it's Tally, man. Uh, but she, I love the, the like confidence that she has now. She's no longer on a pilgrimage, right? She's like leading her people. And there's something so, so cool about that. So as we come out here. There's a squad of security drones up ahead. Well, that would be, that would be the security we'll drones. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Tally. Thanks, Jacob. So we'll come over here. It really does. It really, really does to me feel like uh, like pitch black. I don't know, man. And a Loki mech sitting right in front of us. We'll go ahead and just shoot it with a shotgun because <laughs> we can. And we can bypass this wall safe yet again for more stuff. More credits specifically, which credits are useful. I'll take credits any day of the week. That's fine. Use those and done. 2,000 credits. What up? We obviously need we need all of it, right? Wouldn't be wouldn't be a hundred percent completionist run if we didn't grab everything that we possibly could. So let's go ahead and open this door here, and we'll have to deal with some drones soon. There they are. We'll go ahead and oh, watch that rocket to the face. We'll go ahead and use her overload. Now these enemies have shields. We're gonna go ahead and uh, hopefully. Miranda watches herself a little bit here. We're going to switch because I still have my... I just realized I still have my my whatever it's called. So we're going to put the SMG here, which is hopefully going to rip through these a little bit more. Reload because that's just, you know, and we're out of thermal clip for that. So we'll just have to do this a little bit slower. You're done. Nice, Jacob. Jacob said I didn't know he had like cool little like sign-offs is that what i want to call it or watch these rockets we got another assault drone up there that we want to watch looks like the door is actually shut now so i can't use that way uh but we can go in here and grab oh nope, nope come on grab in here and grab this med kit and kind of use this room for cover to finish off the remaining assault drone that's on that side you can see how quickly they absolutely shred our health unfortunately this rocket drone just taking down everybody uh, we're gonna go ahead and not waste a metagel if we don't have to. We're just gonna see if we can take it down. Now, obviously, we can't charge this one because it's like up on a thing. So you'll see, there's a, definitely a lot of situations where we can we can't deal with things the way we would want to. So we have more ammo. We should have expected this. I don't blame them. We can still catch them. Would anybody blame them? Cerberus has been known to hate aliens. Is like potentially going to take Vitor and experiment on him. And I don't know. Cerberus is forked up, man. Anyway, so we can go through here. Continue on our way. I just, I don't know. It's like, it's spooky, right? Like the game starts spooky. We can go ahead and use this cover here. Just barely dodging that. We'll go ahead and overload. Let's see if we can actually get the flashbang here as well just to kind of turn that off and unfortunately that did kind of kind of hurt so i'm gonna wait to get my shields back like i said it it, it really stinks because i'm not able to right now rocket drone down so all that's left is this assault drone we can take that out pretty quickly looks like there is another rocket drone but it's actually down on the on right here or no it's an assault drone the, this guy i thought i killed this guy anyways we're gonna duck here and we're gonna make sure that we get an overload boom there you go so unfortunately, you you can notice that Jacob's kind of useless right now because they have shields, so we can't really. It's just gonna it's kind of gonna stun them for a second, allowing you to maybe finish it off, which we'll be able to do. And then there should be another one right there. It's so hard to see that. I don't even know. There we go. It's down. 
grab this med kit and 100 credits. Oh, that's not good. You see what I mean? Miranda's like, well, you know, they wanted to, they wanted to do, they're the ones that wanted to do that. All right. So we have uh, some stuff here that we can do. They want us to kind of learn how to control right. our squad mates. Uh, so we'll send them over Take there. Point, Shepard. We'll cover the door. And then we will sit here. And our first big Ymir mech. I forgot that hat. That's. That mech got heavy armor plating. Those quarians never stood a chance. Dude, they just annihilated all of them. Be one tough son of a bitch to take down. Yup, but. My friends, I have a trick here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run over here. We're going to bait it. And it's going to hopefully just kind of stick right there. We'll go ahead and cast overload because she's telling us that it's gonna help. And we'll just kind of dump as much as we can in here. And there you go. I said we were going to take advantage of some of the different things we can kind of do and deal with and and all that jazz well this is one of those pathing things where it's like well we can just literally deal with this and and be fine we don't have to we don't have to really how isn't that you don't you can pull it it'll kind of stun it knock it down and then we'll go ahead and charge and finish it off with a melee hit how dope is that yeah, so that that's uh, that's one of the strats you can do to deal with the the first human or your mirror mech that you deal with, and that's actually something that uh, speedrunners will do as well. And we didn't have to use any of our heavy weapon ammo to do that, which is even which is even better. Normally, that's how you would do it is if you didn't if you didn't know about that trick, you would pull out your heavy ammo, and uh, you know that would help. You would burst down its shields first, and then with overload, and you know it's tutorial stuff, so they're they're kind of teaching you. But we can take advantage of the pathing instead, and all a day 3,000 credits from opening that chest which is pretty sweet and then uh geez look at these guys man right here we can actually scan the damage to your meter mech this? and this is going to allow us to actually later on upgrade our heavy our heavy ammo weapon which is pretty cool and we get iridium which that stuff is all used those those materials uh, are all you the resources whatever they're all used to increase uh research on some of the things that we can do later on which is kind of the bread and butter of of uh the progression system i guess you will of of the game is is actually the research stuff and, and you'll see a lot more of that later looks like tally and the rest of the surviving quarians are here doing the best they can we'll grab this med kit real quick hi tally this is your chance to go find Vitor while I tend to the wounded, Shepard. He's probably somewhere in the back of the loading bay. These poor, these poor quarians, man. It's not even like a quarian is like, you know, it's not just, oh, if they get shot, they're, they're potentially dead because the shot is going to kill them. It's, oh, they ruptured their, their CO2 tanks, space suits, and then, oh, they're dead. Anyways, we can open this door and talk to Vitor. Monsters coming back. Mechs will protect, safe from swarms. Have to hide. No monsters, no swarms. No, 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 no. Vitor? No Vitor, not here. Swarms can't find. Monsters coming, have to hide. Nobody's gonna hurt you anymore. I don't think he can hear you, Commander. Have to hide. Maxwell. You're 
human. Where did you hide? How come they didn't find you? Who didn't find us? The, the monsters. The swarms. They took everyone. So what you just saw there was the new, instead of a charm or intimidate dialogue option, you can actually take an action during a scene. So you always kind of want to be paying attention to those unless you know where they are. Uh, and L2 will always usually be Paragon, and I believe R2 will always be Renegade. So just keep that in mind. There are a lot of opportunities and some that we'll be doing, even though I'm a Paragon, Commander Corey Shepard is a Paragon, you'll see that we'll be taking uh, uh, advantage of some Renegade options that we'll get later. We're not survivors, Vitor. We just got here. You don't know. You didn't see. But I see everything. Looks like security footage. He must have pasted it together manually. What the hell is that? My god. I think it's a collector. A what? Is that some kind of alien? They're a species from somewhere beyond the Omega-4 relay. Only a few people have ever seen one in person. They usually work through intermediaries, like slavers or hired mercenaries. If they're involved with the Reapers somehow, it could explain what happened to the colonies. The Collectors have advanced technology. They could have a weapon that disables an entire settlement at once. The Seeker swarms. No one can hide. The Seekers find you, freeze you. Then the monsters take you away. Why was one of those Collectors on fire? Also, look at how, isn't that so, that's so spooky. Why didn't the Collectors take you? Swarms didn't find me. Monsters didn't know I was here. The Collectors aren't known for being careless. Maybe his Enviro suit kept him from showing up on their sensors. Or they were using technology specifically designed to detect humans. Only human colonies have been hit. Tell me more about these swarms. It's how they find you. Seeker clouds, machines like tiny insects. They go everywhere. They find you, then they sting you, freeze you. Sounds like miniature probes, maybe. Find victims, then immobilize them with a stasis field or nerve toxin. I want to know more about the Collectors. Nobody knows much. They're so rare, a lot of people don't even believe they exist. More importantly, why are they abducting human colonists? What are they after? Maybe the elusive man can figure it out. Yeah, maybe. Also, I just want to mention how much of a hero Vitor is, uh, in the, in, if, you, if you really think about it. What happened next? The monsters took the people onto the ship, and then they left. The ship flew away, but they'll be back for me. No one escapes. I think that's probably all we're getting out of him, Commander. All right. Thank you, Vitor. You're a good we guy. We appreciate what you told us. You were very helpful. I studied them. The monsters. The swarms. I recorded them with my Omni tool. Lots of readings. Electromagnetic. Dark energy. We need to get this data to the elusive man. Grab the quarry and call the shuttle to come pick us up. What? Vitor is injured. He needs treatment, not an interrogation. We won't hurt him. We just need to see if he knows anything else. He'll be returned unharmed. Your people tried to betray us once already. If we give him to you, we'll never get the intel we need. Praza was an idiot, and he and his men paid for it. You're welcome to take Vitor's Omnitool data, but please, just let me take him. You know, I think Tally should join us. You don't have to take Vitor and go. We could work together, just like old times. I want to, but I can't. I've got a mission of my own. It's too important for me to abandon, even for you. When it's over, and I'm still alive, we'll see what happens. That sounds dangerous. What are you doing? I don't think Cerberus needs to hear about it, but it's in Geth space. That should tell you how important it is. All right. Well, obviously, Vitor is going to go with you. He's traumatized and he needs medical care. Tally will give us the Omni tool data and take him to the flotilla. Understood, Commander. Thank you, Shepard. I'm glad you're still the one giving the orders. Good luck out there. If I find anything that can help you, I'll let you know. We're ready for pickup. What a shame. You know, I was really hoping Tally would join us. I guess that's just not the cards we're dealt in Mass Effect 2.
After every mission, we'll also Shepard, check in. Good with work on freedom progress. The Quarians forwarded their findings from Vidor's debriefing. No new data, but it's a surprising olive branch given our history. You and I have different methods, but I can't argue with your results. You ever think about playing nice once in a while? Diplomacy is great when it works, but difficult when everyone already perceives you as a threat. But more importantly, you confirm the Collectors are behind the abductions. Why do I get the feeling you knew about them already? I had my suspicions, but I needed proof. The Collectors are enigmatic at best. They periodically travel to the Terminus systems, looking to gather seemingly unimportant items or specimens, usually in exchange for their technology. When their transactions are complete, they disappear as quickly as they arrived, back beyond the unmapped Omega-4 relay. Until now, we've had no evidence of direct aggression by the Collectors. Why... Why haven't? Why isn't the Omega-4 relay mapped? Why is the Omega-4 relay unmapped? What do we know about it? Only that no ship passing through it has ever returned. Our best guess is that the relay reacts differently to collector vessels, allowing them safe passage. If they can manipulate relays, that's just further evidence of the connection with the Reapers. Any ideas on why they've shifted their focus to humans? If they're agents for the Reapers, it could be any number of reasons. Obviously, humanity played a huge role in Sovereign's destruction. That might have been enough to draw their attention. What really concerns me is why they bother abducting the colonists. Once the humans are paralyzed, why not just kill them? What are the Collectors getting from these deals? The Collectors aren't very forthcoming about their motives. Generally, they seek out species with rare genetic mutations or abnormalities. They pay slavers and work groups exorbitant sums to obtain these specimens, and then they leave. But they've never targeted a single species before, and the previous sample sizes were in the dozens, not the tens of thousands. I just don't understand why. You're holding something back. How do you know the Reapers are involved? The patterns are there, buried in the data. The Consul and the Alliance want to believe the Reaper threat died with Sovereign. You and I know better. I won't wait until the Reapers are on the march. We need to take the fight to them. If this is a war, I'll need an army, or a really good team. I've already compiled a list of soldiers, scientists, and mercenaries. You'll get dossiers on the best of them. Finding them and convincing them to work with you could be challenging, but you're a natural leader. I'll continue to track the Collectors. When they make their next appearance, I'll notify you and your team. Be ready. Keep your list. I want people I trust. The ones who helped me stop Saren and the Geth. That was two years ago, Commander. Most of them have moved on, or their allegiances have changed. Where's Caden Alenko? He's still with the Alliance. Promoted, I believe. His file is surprisingly well classified. And even the elusive man doesn't have access to this? Also, I just, I'm a big fan of this part because we get to check in with every, like, see, you know, because he's keeping tabs on everybody. Where's Erdnot Rex? He returned to Chichanka, and he hasn't gone off world in over a year. He's trying to unite the Krogan clans. Like, it should be pretty suspicious that they're keeping an eye on them, right? What about Tally? She already helped us on Freedom's Progress. That was unexpected. I need more intel before I'll commit to that. Where's Garrus Vicarian? The Turian disappeared a few months after you were declared dead. Even we haven't been able to locate him. Oh no, poor guy. He's heartbroken. Where's Liara Tassoni? She's on Ilium. My sources say that she's working for the Shadow Broker. If so, she can't be trusted. That's a weird thing for her to be doing. Okay. Okay, I get it. They're not available. You're a leader, Shepard. You'll get who you need. I'm a specter, baby. I'm still a specter. Maybe I can get the council to help us out. If you think you can convince them, by all means. Just remember, you've been gone a long time. Things have changed. Yeah, well, we'll be you ready. You worry about the collectors. I'll make sure my team's ready. Good. Two things before you go. First, head to Omega and find Morden Solus. He's a brilliant Solarian scientist. Our intelligence suggests he may know how to counteract the Collector's paralyzing Seeker swarms. I haven't even started and you're telling me what to do? I'm giving you direction. What you do with it is up to you. 
I'm sure you'll make the right decision. All right. What's the other thing? I found a pilot I think you might like. I hear he's one of the best. Someone you can trust. Look who it is, man. Hey, Commander. Just like old times, huh? I can't believe it's you, Joker. Look who's talking. I saw you get spaced. Got lucky with a lot of strings attached. How'd you get here? It all fell apart without you, Commander. Everything you stirred up, the Council just wanted it gone. The team was broken up, record sealed, and I was grounded. The Alliance took away the one thing that mattered to me. Hell yeah, I joined Cerberus. You really trust the elusive man? Well, I don't trust anyone who makes more than I do. But they aren't all bad. Saved your life, let me fly, and there's this. They only told me last night. Tearing up at a ship. It's fine. Good to be home, huh, Commander? I guess we'll have to give her a name. Hell yeah, dude! Oh, man. I forgot how good this scene is. All it is is just showing you the Normandy. But, but damn. It looks so good. How it, dude, come on. <laughs> it's so good. So we're level seven now and we gained a thousand experience for that. Mission summary collectors confirmed as source of attacks on freedom's progress. Quarian survivor Vitor returned with Talizor to the migrant fleet. We'll examine his Omni tool data for anything useful. We got some, uh, we need a head scientist to build this upgrade 15% heavy weapon ammo capacity. And we got 20,000 credits, no big deal. And we found 2,000 iridium. Come on, man, that can't be beat. A little different than Mass Effect 1, but uh, still feels like home. Welcome aboard the new Normandy, Commander. I've been looking over the dossiers. I'd strongly recommend starting by acquiring Morden Solus, the Salarian professor on Omega. We know the Collectors use some type of advanced technology to immobilize their victims. We'll need him to develop a countermeasure to protect us. That's a good point. And without that countermeasure, we'll be helpless if we ever run into the Collectors. Acquiring Professor Solus seems like the most logical place to start. Who are you? I am the Normandy's artificial intelligence. The crew like to refer to me as Edie. Uh-oh. Helmsmen aren't happy when someone takes control of a ship away from them, especially Joker. I do not helm the ship. Mr. Moreau's talents will not go to waste. During combat, I operate the electronic warfare and cyber warfare suites. Beyond that, I cannot interface with the ship's systems. I observe and offer analysis and advice. Nothing more. Huh. So there's an AI on board the server ship, which, if you remember from Mass Effect 1, AI is highly illegal in Citadel space, so... I'm guessing it takes more than just the three of us plus Joker to fly this ship. The Normandy has a full crew. They're at their stations awaiting your orders. Final preparations for takeoff are complete, Commander. When you're ready to go, just pick a destination from the galaxy map and the CIC and I'll plot a course. Jacob and I should return to our posts. Come find us if you have any questions. It's so cool, man. So we now have access to the new Normandy. 
uh, and we have a galaxy map, which is actually very different than it was in Mass Effect 1. In fact, all of the side quests and stuff, so much better in Mass Effect 2. There's a little bit less exploration, of course, but uh, the, the, it, it's what you do have is more rewarding than what, what was there, I feel, anyways. Uh, the environments are all dry, you know, you know what I mean. So we have an elevator. Uh, we have our captain's quarters where we can customize our appearance, just like we did uh, back on the, the elusive man, that station that we went to. And the tech lab. We need the professor, though, before we can actually do anything here. Not only does this upgrade your squad's equipment, uh, but you can also upgrade the Normandy, which is something that you really, really have to do uh, during the course of this game. And trust me, you'll see why. Uh, we also, because this is the Legendary Edition, we have all of the DLC that actually comes with this. So you'll see that we have all of these dossiers now. We have the Convict. We have uh, Dossier, Dossier, the Convict, the Archangel, the Warlord, the Professor, the Council. We need to go, well, we're not, that's not Dossier. We need to go talk to the Council, see if we can get our, uh, our Spectre status back. The Veteran. This is DLC, actually, right here. Uh, the character Zaid is not, he's, he's a DLC character. And then we have Dossier the Master Thief, Kasumi, who is also a DLC character. And then, of course, Stop the Collectors. That's our overall, baby. Uh, and then we have Project Firewalker, Rosalie Lost. This is also DLC and the Normandy crash site. Uh, so, we can go ahead and talk to Edie first. What's this area of the ship? This She'll kind of tell us about center. What, what's Here, happening of the what the ship is. the sensor data and coordinates gunnery and damage control efforts. While Normandy is flown from the bridge, during combat, the commanding officer issues orders from the CIC. Nice. I do love how they kind of took aboard, the... Commander. And this is actually a character, Yao Min Chambers. Uh, you remember Navigator Presley and how he's now dead? Um, she kind of maybe takes that role a little bit. I'm Yao Min Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. And I must say... It's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. The pleasure is mine, Miss Chambers. I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. Sure. Okay, Kelly. Anything else? How's the is crew? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Joker would like to speak to you on the bridge. Anything else, Commander? Yeah, let's you chat. Have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. <laughs> yeah, you do. What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. This is going to be super useful as we proceed. Isn't that the type of task better suited for a VI? Yes, but being your yeoman is just my official role. Unofficially, I observe the crew. Everyone knows how risky our mission is. Many of us may not be coming back. That's a lot of pressure. I have a degree in psychology. I'm good at sensing when people are overly taxed. So they actually put a counselor you board. make sure the crew's mental health is sound. Yes. I look for warning signs. I listen. It's not a full-time job, and it's most effective when done informally. Oh, We're lucky to have here. someone with your skills, Kelly. Thank you, Shepard. What else would you like to know? Uh, what do you think of Cerberus? This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh, but Cerberus has noble objectives. We look out for human interests. Advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. It sounds like Cerberus wants to dominate all aliens and put humankind on top. Exactly. Cerberus looks out for humanity, but that doesn't mean we hate aliens. My sister started a dog shelter, but she loved cats too. I love humanity. I also love Asari, Quarian, Turian, Salarian, Hanar. That isn't in conflict with Cerberus ideals. You're very That's loving. A very positive attitude. What can I say? I'm a people person. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Yeah, are you happy here? How do you feel here? about being assigned to the Normandy? I was handpicked by the elusive man to help fight the greatest threat known to humanity. How do I feel? Honored, exhilarated, terrified. But mostly I feel encouraged. Under your leadership, we can't fail. And we Don't won't. Don't worry. We'll defeat the Collectors. Yeah. I trust you implicitly. The moment I met you, I knew I could close my eyes, fall back, and you'd be there. Oh. I might do more than catch you, Kelly. Now that's an enticing thought. Anything else you'd like Whoa. to Whoa! This stuff is moving fast. Alright, I'm out. I, I, I my heart Maybe still belongs we'll to later. Liara Chambers, so 
Just letting you know. Uh, anyways, so we have our private terminal here. And what's cool about this is you can check the status of your team. You can say, hey, what up? How you doing? And you can actually change the way the they look as well, uh, which is which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't have anything for Jacob yet, but we can also hit info and kind of see, you know, what they have. And you can see that we have all these dossiers that we can't really do anything with just yet. These are the ones that we can currently go recruit. Uh, the ones that are grayed out are ones that we can't recruit yet. So you'll notice right out of the gate, we have a huge squad compared to Mass Effect 1 uh, and Mass Effect 3, actually. Um, so you can check out the upgrades here. And then we also have on-red messages. These are uh, actually super dope because, oops, uh, let me go back, uh, archived, there we go. Uh, from Counselor Anderson, remember we made that option on the off chance that the rumors are true and you actually are alive. I need you to come and talk to me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the last two years. You put me on the council, and it's only fair that you be allowed to speak for yourself after what we've been hearing. And then uh, we have more messages. And you'll see that everything that we did in Mass Effect 1, or, or most of it, is actually represented here. You'll see like a quick name just to say thank you or something. Um, but yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it is here. So we have a deal struck with Zaid Masani. We've reached an agreement with veteran mer mercenary Zaid Masani. You may have known in the you may know the name. Zaid has been involved in some of the best known and some utterly unknown military operations in the Terminus systems and is feared as a ruthless and relentless bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I arranged to have him join you. You'll find him on Omega, where he's wrapping up his current bounty. Don't worry about his fee. I've taken care of that personally. And then we have uh, this as well. Uh, <laughs> Ascension Financial Services, your account. Thank you for submitting your updated medical documentation. Your status has been changed from deceased to alive. After deducting modest administration fees for closing the file, the subsequent change in status and the reactivation of your account, you have a remaining balance, which is why we don't have all the money that we did in Mass Effect 1, because uh, they uh, because of fees, basically. Uh, but that is our uh, a bunch of progress towards Scholar, because we're unlocking a bunch of the new... Um, codex entries that we do of course have in mass effect one we can examine these controls here you can see that it is uh our codex is being updated and we're getting even more scholar stuff which is for trophies and all that jazz we open one for haptic ap adaptive interface rise of the alliance and then uh this is obviously the airlock we can't go out because we're not we're you know we're flying around we have flight controls that we can check out and you can actually close the shutters if you want, but I don't see why you would. And we have pursuit tactics. Are always a pain in the ass. And let's talk to Joker. Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby. Better than new. It fits me like a glove. And leather seats. Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. The reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. <laughs> That's not the same, Joker. There's nothing here that was even part of the real Normandy. There's us. I have to take what I can get. The last two years sucked. You'll see. Even if an AI is spying on us, no way they'll invest this much just to screw us over. It'll be better than the old days. I hope so. I died. Yeah, you were <laughs> such a downer. It's so good. Any conversation with Joker is just like Commander. I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of that. So we can ask him about stuff. So how do you think we're doing? Well the Normandy's not as ready as she could be. There's always more we could upgrade. As for the crew, you'd have to ask a, a people person. You know, like Chambers. What do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last. I would never say anything against Miranda and expect to survive the reprisal. Jacob is way too nice a guy for the number of ways he knows how to kill people. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading it around. Yeah, I won't, because I think Jacob might beat you up. Ever think about the old Normandy and the trouble we got up to? <laughs> yeah, those seem like the good old days now, but come on, it, it was hell at the time. Geth, Saren, Sovereign, and then we got dumped. We're stuck in a weird place, sure, but back then it wasn't all sunshine and bunnies. What happened to the rest of the old crew? I heard most survived. Almost did. Presley didn't. The rest of us just sort of drifted apart. The Alliance didn't care. I don't think they liked all the non-humans in your crew. We were your team, Commander. With the Normandy destroyed and you gone, there wasn't much keeping us together. Hmm. I don't like that. I assume everything's going well up here? 
I really want a chance to put the Normandy through her paces. I just have to trim up the drive output and it'll be like we never lost her. Safety standards advise against manipulating drive settings while engines are powered and in use, Mr. Moreau. Commander, can we shut this thing off? I don't need it in my day-to-day. -day. I'm no fan either, but we're stuck with it. Until I find a soldering gun. It's gotta be some wires I can cross to make it hurt. No sabotage. Understood? Yeah, yeah, don't break the boss's toys. <laughs> it's so good. I assume everything's Oops. going for now. Fractured I assume my, everything's good for going now. Well. Fractured my thumb on the mute, but I think I made my point. <laughs> Alright. See you, Commander. It's so good. Yeah, so sure. we can ask him about we can ask Edie about um uh uh itself and everything I else. I wanna know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Yeah, you and Joker. How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. <laughs> what do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. I collate the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. Cyber warfare means things like viruses, right? In close range ship to ship combat, I can sometimes break through the firewalls of an enemy's internal wireless network. Once I seize control of their systems, I can turn off gravity or air. I can disable weapons guidance or shields, or I can put their fusion plant in meltdown. On the defense, I manage Normandy's own suite of jammers, decoys, and internal firewalls. Wow. Sounds incredibly useful. Why isn't there someone like that on every warship? An organic operator cannot react quickly enough to changing circumstances or perform the necessary multitasking. This is a role that can only be filled by an artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, we are suspect. Well, it might have something to do with how an AI almost destroyed galactic civilization, just putting it out there. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Restricted functions? Like what? I do not know. Some of my databases are sealed, and some of my hardware is kept offline. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. Interesting. Let's discuss something else. Ready. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Do you have a specific inquiry? Yeah, structure. How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. So how many operations is Cerberus running right now? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Oh, man. What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. That question. Oh, you know, for Let's you. discuss something else. Ready. What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge, where the navigator plots our FTL vectors, and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. Yeah, sitting right here, thanks. <laughs> I want to know Do more Do you have a specific you. inquiry? Yeah, so we can ask uh, specifically about their job, their name, their location. Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. Nice. Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare. I collate the records of shipboard. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. All right. I think that's, that's all we all can get now. from Edie now. You out, Shepard. But there's still more that we can do here on the Normandy, uh, the second Normandy, Normandy 2. Uh, we have more of the ship that we can go to. You'll see that this side is actually locked. Uh, this side will remain locked. The tech lab, it will remain locked until we... A scientist we... is required to use the technical laboratory. Thank you, Edie. Uh, so it will remain locked until a scientist is brought on board. And we do have our... You can actually see our weapons, which is pretty cool. But our, our weapon loadout here. And uh, we can change to the arc projector if we want to. It ionizes targets with non-visible lasers to ready them for a high-voltage electrical attack. Pretty cool. But we're going to keep what we have for now. And then 
you know, we'll be able to change our weapons as we as we proceed through the game and get new ones. Uh, but it's definitely not anywhere the same amount as it was in Mass Effect 1. You're not going to have that level of uh, of stuff. And look at the core. Oh, it looks so cool. We definitely need to go see who we have on board down there. But let's talk to Jacob. Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. You may change your tune if we end up like the original Normandy. Maybe. As long as the elusive man walks his talk. And you do the same, I'll do my best to make sure we succeed. That's been the condition for my service so far. I have issues with certain actions Cerberus has taken in the past. What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. That's true. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Taylor. Likewise, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. You know, I like him. He's a good guy. Let's see if he has anything else for can us. Help with something. So we can ask him about his uh, his thoughts on the mission, opinion of the crew, all what that. What are we jazz. doing, Jacob? What's your sense of the mission? Probably the same as everyone else. I just want to figure out what the real threat actually is. Got no problem with risk. I just need a clear goal. Anything else, Commander? What do you think of the state of the crew? Well, we don't have a full complement. We don't stand a chance without the right specialists on side. Anything else, Commander? I understand you made quite an impact after you left the Alliance. Miranda and I stopped a Batarian plan to release a biological agent on the Citadel. That's when I first met her. It took us out to the Nemean Abyss and back. Save the Citadel like you, but what's the same? A good deed's like pissing yourself in dark pants? Warm feeling, but no one notices. The whole what? thing was hushed like they're good Who at doing. Who says that? But I know what I did, and I'm proud of it. I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Already? I'm not big on forcing these talks, Shepard. Let's do this later. All right, we'll talk rude. later. Come in. Just want to get to know the people that I'm working with, but fine. That was rude. Anyways, we can go through here, and unfortunately, like I said, can't go to the tech labs because we don't have that open yet, but we can go to the briefing comm room and talk to Edie if we want, who's going to tell us what this room is for. What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. In Different addition than the one to in interfacing Mass with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. Cool. Sounds useful. Quant <laughs> Quantum what? That's all I, for now. I don't. Logging you out. I don't. I don't even. You got some some quantum bits. Sounds hot. I don't. Think that ain't that ain't that a trip? Uh, we can also talk to the ED that's in here as well. What's um, this area of the ship? But it's not. This is it's, the armory where small arms who, are maintained and upgraded. Who would have thought? Omni tool. That's all for now. <laughs> She's just like, bye. So we have a little bit more that we can check out. Let's take the elevator down. You'll see that we have a bunch of different floors. Uh, but the one that we're going to end today's episode on is the commander's cabin, which we can head in here. And there's a few things I want to show you in here because I think it's super cool. So first of all, we have a awesome, awesome wall that is an aquarium. And uh, I want this really bad for myself in real life because I, I think it's super cool. Now, we can also check out, look at that right there. We have a picture of our love from Mass Effect 1 just sitting on our desk. Now, in our case, it's Liara. In your case, it might be somebody else. Miranda. I mean, uh, not Miranda. Uh, uh, Ashley. I couldn't think of her name. Or uh, or Caden. In our case, though, it is the love of my life, Liara. We also have the Medal of Honor. You can actually view your trophies here, which is pretty cool. Um, you can see that we've already killed 2,000 enemies. Uh, we're, we just started Mass Effect 2. We've already killed 2,000 enemies. So I did a lot of work in Mass Effect 1, let me tell you. Um, and then uh, we have our private terminal, so we can check our messages and stuff just like we could up there. We can customize our armor and our look. And uh, we also have a sound system, and we can choose to put on music if we want. Like Mass Effect 1. And we can turn that off because we don't we don't actually want that. This one is way more way more beautiful. But look at this. I mean the captain's quarters obviously looks way better 
uh, than it did in Mass Effect 1. There's a lot more that happens here. You'll have your fish uh, that we'll be able to get and add to it later. But, my friends, that is going to be it for today's episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition uh, on Insanity. Um, I I love it, man. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we get to play this. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we will have new episodes around 2 p.m. Eastern. They will be premiering. And uh, don't forget to leave a like and a comment on these videos because it really does, I promise, uh, help boost it into the algorithm. and really, really helps me out. So thank you. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to those on patreon.com slash online. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to uh, have the time to do these videos. Thank you guys so much for your support over there. Uh, and we do have new rewards that will be happening, including like a, uh, um, a daily uh, coffee with Corey video thing where we just talk and hang out for, for a little bit. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on Wednesday with yet another Mass Effect video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, never give up, never surrender to big giant Yermir mechs. Hi, everyone.